It's a good Ag AM in Kansas morning. Good morning. Let's take a look and see what's coming up today. First K-State's Winter Ranch Management Series, we visit with Dr. Chris Reinhardt, who discusses mineral supplementation for cattle during the winter, and Dr. Dave Redhorse, who explains veterinary feed directives. Next, Jenny Bracken talks about this year's Women's Managing the Farm Conference, then learn about the Kansas Cattle Drive in Bueller a cattle sale for small producers, and also an educational opportunity for consumers. We'll end with a discussion about equine reproduction. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. This segment brought to you by Kansas Regenerative Medicine. Your stem cells, your health, your life. I'm Chris Reinhardt, Extension Beef Specialist with Kansas State University. We've been traveling around the state the past couple of months talking uh, with producers about key issues. We call it the Winter Ranch Management Series, but we're trying to cover everything that a a commercial cow-calf producer in the state of Kansas might have concerns with, with uh, specific respect uh, to this winter. In my case, I'm talking about year-round supplementation of mineral, uh, and that would include both the macro minerals as well as trace mineral supplementation. In the wintertime when we're feeding cows, especially if we're feeding supplemental feeds, good quality hay, and supplemental feeds such as distiller's grains, uh, gluten feed, soybean meal, things of that nature, they've got a tremendous amount of phosphorus, as does corn, sorghum, and silages, but What we still want to make sure we're supplementing are the trace minerals because trace minerals that are passed to the calf through the placenta is really all that calf is going to be born with. And unfortunately, mother's milk carries very little, if any, trace mineral nutrition whatsoever. So until that calf is old enough to start consuming good quality forage uh, and supplement and supplemental feed and maybe mineral, that calf is gonna have to rely on the storage of trace minerals that it has in its liver and other places. It's gonna draw off those stores. And so we've gotta be cognizant to supplement trace minerals to the cow throughout gestation up until and through calving time. Other times of the year that are critical in the spring of the year, our native forage, if we get ample uh, rainfall, our native forage in Kansas, all across Kansas is tremendous source of both protein energy as well as minerals. However, in late summer, after the rain shut off, grass will harden up, mineral content wanes, and so at the very time we're approaching weaning time, when we're hoping that calf is loaded with trace minerals, is the very same time when the forage is supplying less and less, and so we've gotta make sure to supply both the cow and the calf during that period. Uh, number one, to make sure that cow breeds and settles, but then number two, to make sure that calf is weaned during that stressful transition and has an adequate supply of trace minerals, both in its feeds as well as in its storage. There's a number of forms that mineral, both trace mineral and macro minerals like phosphorus and calcium can be supplemented to cows and calves, whether that be in the form of loose mineral or block form, one thing that we've noticed is we want to make sure in the spring of the year when grass is really rapidly growing and lush and loaded with lots of good nutrients, uh, magnesium deficiency or grass tetany can occur. Two minerals we want to pay special attention to if that's a critical concern in your area. Seek out the counsel of your nutritionist and veterinarian to make sure, but If we're in a grass tetany area, we want to make sure we get magnesium to those cows in the form of a high mag mineral, but we also want loose salt available. There's recent data that's come out just in the past year or so that says if cows are adequate and have abundant access to salt, loose salt, and water to help dilute out that salt, as well as the magnesium, it can be very effective in preventing uh, issues of grass tetany in the spring of the year. Heinen Brothers, a fourth generation Northeast Kansas farm family, knows how tough farming can be. Farmers helping farmers. 
Heinen Brothers Ag, selling and servicing crop protection products, fertilizer, anhydrous ammonia, cover crops, quality aerial and ground application. Call today to learn about our extended term financing program, 800-760-4964, HeinenBrothersAg.com. Grain sorghum is one of the most important cereal crops worldwide, and Kansas leads the nation in its production. Over the years, sorghum has been either exported, used in animal feed domestically, or for other industrial uses. Recently, its use in the ethanol market has seen tremendous growth, with 30% of domestic sorghum typically going to ethanol production. Kansas Grain Sorghum is committed to sorghum research, market development, and education. Learn more at ksgrainsorghum.org. This segment brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. To join today or for more information, go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, we're here in Alta Vista tonight talking about veterinary feed directives, which go into effect January 1, 2017. These feed directives will enforce the law as it has been written for a number of years on feed grade antibiotics and will not allow the extra label use of these antibiotics. And so after January 1, 2017, a person will need a signed veterinary feed directive before they can purchase feed with, for example, chlortetracycline in it to use for their cattle or to buy a bag of straight tetracycline to use for treating respiratory disease in, in calves. The Food and Drug Administration has written this directive so that all of the feed grade antibiotics have veterinary oversight. In other words, the veterinarian has to be involved in the process of procuring this and the producers have to follow the instructions as written by the veterinarian according to the label. So, the, the producer is liable because they have to follow the directions. The veterinarian is liable because they're stepping out there and saying, you know, this is what needs to be done. And then the feed mill is also liable because they have to follow the directions, not only in what the veterinarian signs, but make sure that the directions on the label are followed. One of the big concerns as we do these meetings across the state is how we are going to deal with anaplasmosis with the veterinary feed directive because right now the labels are for control of the clinical signs of anaplasmosis, which means we have to have clinical signs present before we can write the VFD for the chlortetracycline in the mineral. Uh, there's, there's several different labels and we're trying to work through the logistics right now of how we're going to handle this uh, because we, we don't have treatment levels and we don't have prevention levels per se. So if we have to follow the letter of the law on the label, which right now it looks like we're going to have to, we're going to be in, in new territory on how we handle anaplasmosis. Buying a car shouldn't be this hard. And at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego, it isn't. It's actually awesome. Whether you want a new or used car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. Even if you want to custom order a new car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. See Toby's team at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego. We're awesome. Next time you see a beautiful field of corn, reach out and thank the farmers who work tirelessly to raise corn for livestock feed, renewable fuels, and exports to feed a growing world population. The farmers on the Kansas Corn Commission work for Kansas Corn with grower-funded checkoff dollars that support foreign and domestic market development, research, promotion, and education to expand opportunities for Kansas farmers. To learn more, visit kscorn.com. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. 
Ag AM in Kansas brought to you in part by Kansas Corn. Learn more at kscorn.com. Welcome to this year's Women Managing the Farm Conference. This is the 11th conference that we've held within the Women Managing the Farm organization. I'm Jenny Bracken. I'm one of the co-leaders for this year's conference. The original reason we wanted to have a, a conference like this was to target women in farming families. Uh, years ago, it was primarily to target women that maybe had lost a husband or a partner that operated the farm, and then they were all of a sudden in charge of the farm on their own. And after the first few conferences, we quickly realized that there was a need for all women in agriculture to have a conference like this. I'm a fifth generation operator. We farm and ranch in south central Kansas. And I think something like this is really important because we are involved on the operation, or I say I am, but I mean we as attendees are involved, involved on the operation all the time. And there's so many other conferences that maybe aren't geared necessarily towards women. We just felt that there was a need out there for women to have a conference where they could come, learn, ask questions, and feel uninhibited to do that. Uh, women were able to come, they're able to network, they're able to share ideas, and they're able to learn more about their operation and maybe incorporate some of those ideas back home into their operation. Uh, our speakers range from public speakers to private speakers. Uh, we have speakers that discuss leasing, that discuss land ownership, we have speakers that talk about transition planning, and then we have speakers that talk about production related issues, cattle, other livestock, uh, fence building, equipment and machinery maintenance. We really try to target all areas of agriculture and we try to make the conference so that the ideas or the aspects that the ladies learn here, they're able to utilize and take home and apply. Attendees can find out about future conferences by visiting the website at womenmanagingthefarm.info. The Women Managing the Farm Committee also sends out annual reminders via email uh, and, and regular mail to our, our previous participants. So they receive those reminders that the, up, that the conference is coming up soon and they can register online at the website. Earlier in my life, I rode bucking horses and rodeos, and my shoulders took such a beating, and that was probably the reason for having several previous surgeries on both shoulders. About a year ago, I decided that I didn't want to have another surgery, and so I contacted Kansas Regenerative Medicine, took their treatment process. It was relatively pain-free. Now, after eight months, my shoulders have healed to the point where I think I'm probably 90 to 95 percent of normal. It takes a couple of months to start to see results with stem cell injections, but at about three to three and a half months, I started to, to feel better. I started to have less pain and feel real progress. That continued to increase gradually until now at approximately eight months, and I'm extremely pleased. I've got full range of motion. I can lift weights, I can throw, I can do uh, a lot of things that uh, I couldn't do without a lot of pain previously. The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. Support Kansas agriculture education with an AgriTag. AgriTags are available anytime at your county treasurer. They look great on cars and trucks. For more information, go online to ksagclassroom.org. This segment brought to you by Heinen Brothers Ag. Farmers helping farmers by offering quality aerial and ground application, fertilizer, ag chemicals, and anhydrous ammonia. Call today to protect your crop yield. I'm Darren Busick, uh, I'm the Ag Agent here in Reno County with K-State Extension and, and today we're having the Kansas Cattle Drive. Uh, several months ago with our Reno County Cattlemen's Association we had a, an idea brought to us by Jeff Smith that he, uh, he knew that they did it in Valentine where they lined bulls up on Main Street and uh, helped producers uh, advertise and, and sell bulls. In uh, Valentine, Nebraska, they'll line Main Street one day out of the year with 50 pens and uh, producers bring bulls from a far away as Wyoming and South Dakota to it. 
and it's a pretty big deal up there. And I started thinking, well, why can't we do that down here for the smaller producers? And so we kind of thought that might be a good, good deal here in central Kansas. And so we started our own, we called it the Kansas Cattle Drive. And we, uh, we went ahead and put our own twist to it by adding a trade show where we have about uh, 35 to 40 booths inside. Um, and then we also brought ranches from all across the state. Uh, they brought heifers and cow-calf pair and bulls. We're most excited. The weather is absolutely incredible. The, uh, great sunshine. It's supposed to be in the low 70s. Not much wind. We got a great crowd, a diverse crowd here today, uh, both of both city people and producers uh, looking to uh, purchase or be interested in seed stock. Uh, there's about 25 or 30 seed stock operations here with cattle on display today. My main thing was to be able to be able to promote production sales, and uh, and also those smaller guys that may raise 15 bulls. To 20 bulls a year, they they need to be able to advertise on 11 level playing fields. I think one of the most important things about this event is just simply ag education. I think it's uh, we're at this particular event we're meshing both producers and city urban folk together, uh, being completely transparent with what we do on our operations. I think uh, both promoting seed stock, uh, but why we do what we do on a daily basis. There's all sorts of promotional material that different producers have brought from different perspectives of what we do. I think that's the number one goal in mind here. We took it from just being a place for producers like myself to bring a few bulls to put on display, to Darren Gruitt, to having um, uh, informational meetings for both consumers and producers. And there's, all, there's a small trade show inside and there are uh, also sponsors that got Main Street lined with some of their products. So. It has out, it outgrew my expectations in a hurry, and Mother Nature even cooperated this year, giving us beautiful weather for it. Something I'm I'm really excited about is right now I can hear kids in the background and, and seeing these kids that don't see animals on a daily basis, that aren't out on the farm, and they're going to figure out you know what these cows are for and that they're here for us to eat, and, and they can understand some of the agriculture sides of things that they've never seen before, and so they're seeing it right here in their town. In reality, actually, I was talking to a friend earlier, and I told him, I said, you know, if I don't sell one bull today, but I make a consumer understand the beef market and beef itself better than they already knew about it, then I consider today a rousing success, because if we don't have consumers eating our product, why are we raising the product? So it's all, the educational aspect of this day is probably much more important than if I sell a bull or not. Yeah, one thing that we've done with, uh, with the city of Bueller, they, they've been just more than helpful and uh, more, on, more than on board with this, they just have really helped us. And we put sand down on the streets and we've, we have cows and, and pins banging at five in the morning and the neighbors have, have loved it. The, the, um, companies downtown and the restaurants and stuff have really liked it and, and we love to work with them and look forward to the future with them with the Kansas Cattle Drive. I've been in the cattle business all my life. I was born uh, a fourth generation and my daughters are now the fifth generation Angus uh, seed stock producers. Um, cattle are just my life. I, you know, I don't know anything different I guess. Uh, it's what I get up every day and want to do. I don't go to necessarily go to work. It's what I want to do and it's what I love and about my passion. There's no doubt that uh, they've already put the legwork in, in place to have this event next year right here again in Bueller. Uh, obviously we're all going to learn from some things that maybe we do a little bit different next year, but I'd say so far for being a first time event it's gone off without a hitch and there's no doubt in my mind we'll be here again next year to support the Kansas Cattle Drive. Yeah, we're, uh, we're already geared towards next year and, and if anybody has any questions or comments about this year or next year, they can go to our Facebook page. It's Kansas Cattle Drive on Facebook. Uh, they can email me at Darren Busick at KSU.edu. I really think it's something we'll build off of with this being our first year. Uh, we're really looking forward to uh, the next years to come just to see how this thing can grow and change and, and look forward to produce, you know, advertising for producers all across the state.
Soil is the life of a farm. And for 25 years, SureCrop Liquid Crop Nutrition has helped growers produce abundant quality crops while preserving and improving the soils they steward. SureCrop offers complete soil and plant analysis with cropping recommendations, delivery direct to your on-farm storage, and quality crop nutrition custom blended for your field. Choose SureCrop for the assurance of excellence for your soil. Call today or visit their website for more information. Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture, represents grassroots agriculture. The state's largest and most powerful farm organization stands up for its members through leadership development, agriculture education, legal defense, environmental advocacy, farm safety, and risk management. Members also enjoy money-saving benefits. To join our organization today or to learn more, go to www.kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Ag AM in Kansas is brought to you in part by SureCrop, liquid crop nutrition delivered right to your farm. Hello and welcome to Horsin' Around. I'm Dr. Chris Blevins at Kansas State University Veterinary Health Center, joined today by Dr. Jason Grady. He is an assistant clinical professor here in equine reproduction and field service at Kansas State. So welcome, Dr. Grady. Thank you, Dr. Blevins. One thing that I think a lot of owners, they uh, need to know about, and, and one is reproduction of the mare, and more specifically, when they're pregnant, and when they need to be looking at their mare, or checking the mare, or how early could they check the mare to see if she's pregnant, and what would be the earliest, I guess, that they could check? Sure. Uh, you know, I think uh, pregnancy in the mare is an exciting time. We've spent the year maybe planning to see who we're going to breed to, uh, go through the process of breeding the mare, and then we have 11 months of anticipation potentially uh, to hopefully have a healthy live foal. Yeah. And so as far as uh, checking the mare, uh, the early stages of pregnancy seem to be the most critical time frame where we're looking at. Maybe in the first 30 days, we've seen that up to 10 to 15% of pregnancies are lost during that time frame. And hmm. majority of pregnancies that are lost are usually lost in the first trimester or the first 90 days. And so it's recommended that we check the mare um, sometime around 12 to 16 days after the mare is ovulated or after her last exposure to the stallion. Okay. And this allows us to, one, um, check to make sure that the mare is pregnant. And if she's not, then we can plan for her next heat cycle. And also, if she is pregnant, we can try to rule out the presence of twins. Hmm. And then, as, assuming we find a, a single pregnancy, just only one, one uh, pregnant vesicle at that time, then I recommend checking again about day 28 to day 30 of hmm. pregnancy. That allows us to make sure that the pregnancy is progressing normally, make sure the fetus is developing normally, uh, make sure we can develop a, or identify a uh, fetal heartbeat hmm. at that time frame. And then if we can check them again towards the end of that first trimester, 60 to 90 days, either just with rectal palpation or ultrasound, just confirm that we still have a pregnancy going into those second and third trimester. And I think that uh, when you're saying those, especially the early pregnancies, you're through ultrasound, I guess, is a lot of those earlier ones Very to true. really, really see that. Uh, and the ultrasound helps diagnose a lot of different things if there's issues, I imagine, sure. too, with pregnancy. Yeah. Uh, and with twins or what would be uh, something we'd be concerned with of twins and the horse because you know a lot of horse owners they hear about twins and how evil potentially it could be and why is that well i'm sure you've seen or you've heard the the success stories where people had a set of twins that have survived normally um, have mares carried to full term and had a healthy set of foals sometimes the clients didn't even know that the mare was pregnant with twins but that if uh, that's the exception to the rule and, and not the, the norm. Oftentimes, a uh, majority of mares will, if they are pregnant with twins, will lose one or both the pregnancies at, in the first 60 mm. days of pregnancy. Okay. If they make it past that time frame, maybe they'll go ahead and, and abort those foals at mm. around six to eight months. If they do carry on into that last trimester, usually those foals are gonna be born uh, premature, mm. maybe have some serious medical conditions, and so, Going back to what we talked about earlier, if we can check the mares early in those first 12 to 14 days post-breeding, uh, post-ovulation, maybe we can try to uh, minimize some of those risk, risk factors and try to help um, correct the, the problem if there are twins at that time. Right, okay, well I think that's all great information. I think if you ever have any questions about uh, equine reproduction, you can sure call and talk to Dr. Grady. 
Uh, or if uh, you have any other issues or questions you have, uh, just give us a call here at Kansas State Veterinary Health Center. I'm Dr. Chris Blevins with Horsin' Around, and we'll see you around. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. To see this show and past episodes of Ag AM in Kansas, go online to agamincansas.com.